Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm gonna be working on a whole mix of different works in this video, making it into like a whole long studio session. I don't know how long it's gonna be. Depends on how long this recording takes. So buckle in, get your paints and pencils, and let's just work together on some art. So for the first pieces I'll be showing the process of, um, these are some future Bill and Saul prints possibly, or stickers, I'm not really sure yet. I worked on them a couple weeks ago and as I've been working on them and some other things, especially the big painting I'm working on, I'm trying to figure out a cohesive theme for the next shop launch. I'm really thinking now it'll just be a whole berry cowboy collection, maybe with a little bit of fall inspiration for the end of summer approaching and I'm really excited to do like more Halloween type artwork but most of all I just want to make some more Bill and Saul artwork. If this is the first video you are watching on my channel, Bill and Saul are original characters or OCs of mine that are monster slaying cowboys who live in a fantasy setting with magic and their main kind of antagonists are like a group of vampires. I feature a lot of the artwork of them on this channel, my Instagram, and my shop. They've basically become mascots of my artwork. I painted portraits of them a couple months ago using oil pastels for the first time and I really loved how the pieces turned out and wanted to turn them into stickers or prints for, and as I said before, I wanted to turn them into like stickers or prints for my next shop launch as well, as well as take it as a chance to practice painting their portraits for the bigger painting I'm working on right now. So I took some pictures of the pieces and brought them into Procreate, cut out the extra and began to paint on top of them. Since the original pastel work is perfect for like a simple sticker, I really wanted to push my painting and rendering skills for practice and nailing down Bill and Saul's likeness and how I want their faces to look. Really distinguishing the characters from one another and their personalities, I desperately need to make a character shoot for both of them because I find myself either drawing them more realistically or more cartoony or changing their noses slightly or changing their facial hair. I just need to like nail down a consistent look for them so my, so my depictions of them across my artwork are more consistent. Character sheets and turnarounds can lead to more of like a professional look and like consistently consistency with drawings, uh, and drawings and paintings of the characters, and I think therefore allow people to more readily recognize them and differentiate the character from others. I and I think that's why I'm so heavily leaning on color palette and their respective cowboy hats as a crutch and shortcut to recognizing them when I really need to buckle down and officially design them. It's basically, uh, there's the, the pink purple guy and then the blue guy, and I feel like that's easily recognizable on my social media, so I think I just need to, I just feel like I need to step up on my character designing game and really, um, finalize their designs, but making their designs more official is kind of hard for me because it makes me have to commit to a final design and be content with the final product, which I sh really struggle with, but it's something necessary that I have to do to improve and become a better artist. And it's just, it makes it so much easier creating more art of that character because I'm not constantly having to look at my last work or my last like five paintings and figure out oh how am I going to depict them this time based on those paintings it's more like I have this clear way of doing it and I'm just going to follow it and it'll be easier to memorize as well. I just need to recognize that there's always room to update the character in the future and modify some things but I should at least be able to nail down their faces and their likenesses. Also I've gotten some questions and asked if it's okay if you guys draw them and yes I would love to see that and um, I would love to make it easier for you guys to do that if I had consistent and concrete references for you guys. I know with my favorite artists, if I like want to draw their characters, like I think a couple months ago, I really wanted to draw my boyfriend's D&D character and I was like scouring his Instagram and looking at all the like drawings of this character that he did. And I was just like, oh, I need like a reference 3D turnaround of this character to really understand it and I do the same thing with like TV show uh, characters or like the Spider-Verse characters just trying to grab as many angles and references as possible to really understand the character but yeah I, I want it to be easier for you guys so it can really be a community thing and we can all like input our own uh, interpretations of these characters and it'd be super fun. And ultimately, having a clear reference and guideline to how the characters look will also lead to higher quality and quantity of Bill and Saul art, which is great because I have some ideas I really want to explore with the characters. 
I really want to draw them in combat, maybe traveling, what their rooms might look like, what their families might look like, as well as like pirate versions. Uh, I mentioned previously in a video that I wanted to do like pirate versions of them and I still haven't done it. I still really want to do it, so just really need to get on that character sheet. So hopefully in the future videos, I'll take the time to do that. As someone who has a background in life drawing and doing a ton of portraiture, if you guys seen like in the background of my videos, as I'm showing my studio, I have a ton of like pastel portraits of people. Nice alliteration. Just a bunch of like life drawing and uh, portraiture and like face skills. So facial features and likeness is something that I've always enjoyed tackling and I really want to continue that skill to my work with my characters and really make them recognizable. Moving on, I wanted to talk a bit about YouTube as I so often do in this in these draw with me videos. I feel like I'm always always mentioning something about YouTube. But I ended up posting eight videos in the month of July, about two every week, and I wanted to reflect on how it was going and share my experience as an artist trying to make video content creation as part of their income and artistic expression. If you would have like asked me like maybe even just like two or three years ago if I would want to be a YouTuber, I would probably say no or like I would never think I would be able to. So it's very strange like posting to YouTube now as being like a chronic YouTube kid growing up and now I'm like feeding into the machine and creating content myself. It's, it's very it's a very interesting feeling but overall I'm feeling pretty positively about the content I'm posting. It has allowed me to create more artwork this month than I have in a while with just doing draw with me content. Doing longer form studio session videos and filming myself drawing really lets me focus on my art in the forefront and pri prioritize it before any type of administrative work or content creation or like post content creation work like editing or compiling or organizing. I feel more and more excited and connected with what I'm creating as well as more confident with my abilities since I'm drawing more regularly. Like I feel like I'm back in high school where I'm really just set up with my sketchbook and maybe my paints and just like pumping out art and just having a lot of fun and ultimately like learning a lot and getting back on my art game a bit. <laughs> when I hit the upload button nowadays, I feel more proud and accomplished with what I'm posting. And I think that really shows through the content with, with your guys' responses to what I'm making, as well as how well it's performing on my channel. But yeah, the videos seem to be performing pretty consistently and you guys seem to really enjoy them. I feel like these draw with me's are like the, are going to be, or already are the like, bread and butter of what I want my channel to be the months leading up to July. I was kind of feeling lost with what I wanted to make and was anxious about video views and video performance and everything was like a roller coaster up and down with posting videos and how well they would do. All YouTubers talk about like the, the number system, like your video out of 10 and I was either getting, oh, it'd be like a one out of 10, it'd be super great. And then the next week it'd be like a 10 out of 10, like no one's watching this, no one is clicking on this. And YouTube is like basically like, do better or try better next time. And I'm just like, thanks. But some, yeah, like I was saying, some content was skyrocketing, aka my sketchbook tours and help tutorial content, while other content was barely reaching anyone, which I understand because the base I was building with my channel, since it's so small, like people didn't know who I was. They didn't really have a connection with me and there wouldn't really be a point to click on a video with someone that's not offering you any advice or you're not learning from them or learning any from the video or it's not an already established like video, regular video content you would see from that creator. But with these longer format drawing videos, I'm able to share more about my art and myself and get more personal, which a lot of you have told me is comforting and nice to have on while you guys do art yourselves. And I feel like so many of us make art as a solo activity and don't have a shared studio space or a constant group of friends around to keep us company while we create and I think one of my goals of my channel now is to provide that comforting chill somewhat silly presence and fo foster a safe creative space for all of us to work in 
and it makes me happy when you guys comment that you make my, that you make my videos like a part of your routines or drawing sessions um someone commented that they really like to put my put my videos on in the morning with like a cup of coffee and that just it makes me really happy that you guys are like enjoying the content and just like having like cozy comfy vibes with it and i feel like that's I wasn't initially like going for that with my YouTube channel, but I think just with the nature of probably my personality and the way that I present my artwork, it kind of just naturally went into that way. So yeah, I've, but I think that's really cool. And I want to continue that vibe. And while my draw with me content isn't reaching like tens of thousands of views, like some of my other content, like tutorials or sketchbook tours i feel like a lot of the community and connection is being built which is so much more valuable than views or virality i can't post sketchbook tours all the time that's just not sustainable i mean i have like a backlog of a ton of sketchbooks but i don't really want to show all of that artwork a lot of it's personal and i don't want to really be a channel of how to draw and drawing tips and just you just come you just come to my channel for just like art advice because I don't necessarily feel completely credible in that. But making fun, casual drawing content is the stuff I like to watch and therefore I really like to make that stuff as well. And it's fulfilling to see the value you show through with you guys watching and commenting and sharing your own ex experiences, art, and and I equally gain so much knowledge and so much fulfillment from you guys like interacting with the the content and like sharing your own stories I find it's really value to me as a as a like perspective like content creator wanting this to be more of my career and to be honest I started posting two videos a week to see if I could bump up my adsense for July with trying to make this my career I really wanted to see how how much my posting frequency could affect my adsense or sponsor sponsorship um opportunities or just like biz general business stuff and I'm trying to take I'm trying to take my content creation and art and make a full-time career out of it and and what ended up happening with the AdSense is that it completely stayed the same. I think it's actually less than a couple months ago but that's because I haven't been posting as many like sketchbook tours and I think that's what was keeping a, a good chunk of change flowing through my channel but there has been so much more rich community building things happening with my channel that I wouldn't trade the time I spent filming, editing, and uploading for anything else i mean an increase in adsense would have been nice eventually but i feel like it's so crucial and key to build a connection to an audience and provide you guys with meaningful quality content and quality art because that's what this whole thing is about it's about art and that's something i really want to value and i really want to make my artwork personal to me but people are able to connect to it and for lack of a better term like vibe with it and really be able to interact with it and just like you know it's art it's it's not necessarily once i release it into the world it's not necessarily uh my own insight anymore it's like it's up to interpretation all that sort of stuff uh, before I get too in the weeds of art, what art is, how people interact with it. Will I do the same for August with posting two videos a week? Okay, so in my script, I originally put yes, but I'm honestly not sure anymore with thinking about it a couple days. I don't feel burnt out at all, and I already have around eight videos planned for August, and I've I've started the scripts and have been like organizing footage for a lot of them already. Um, a couple of them being highly requested videos about how to learn anatomy and some self-taught artist resources. All of them continuing to be in like a draw with me fashion because I really like that form. But so make sure if you're subscribed, if you want to see those videos. Um, also, I'm kind of really wanting to get into streaming, but I'm struggling to find a streaming setup that will work and hopefully we'll have a stream or two this month if I can figure it out. However, the increase in video creation, and this is why I'm like kind of hesitant with continuing to do this consistently. Um, this like two video a week schedule has changed plans and projections for my shop. So like I said, posting two videos a week was originally a way to increase my AdSense for the month so I wouldn't have to continually do a shop update 
every single month but since that didn't really work out and i didn't really have time a lot of things were going on for the month of july but i didn't really have time to organize a whole shop launch have products ready all that sort of stuff i had to cancel the update for july and reschedule it for sometime in august or it might even be september right now but i really want to have quality products for you guys and for my own sake just for my own fulfillment like i want to make things that I will want to use so and I'd rather wait and really make sure they're good quality and a great variety of products as well I'm looking into making prints right now too so as well as um, introducing like a sticker club membership with Bill and Saul stickers as well as like a mini print tier and all that takes a lot of time and setup because I want to make sure that it's worth your money and support. I want to emphasize this because this is like the most important thing. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys who watch my videos, engage with my Instagram content, and support my shop. It means so much to me that so many of you support my artwork and I only want to deliver like the best artwork um, products and and content in return. So I hope it's not too long of a wait. I'm really excited for the upcoming stickers and prints, which of them being Bill and Saul themed. So there's a lot of love being poured into them. I just gotta cook a little bit longer and finalize some things. And, and I really want the current big painting I'm working on now to be finished and made into prints for the next shop launch. Oh yeah, okay, uh, update on the painting. I hate it right now. <laughs> But we all go through an ugly painting stage, right? I have a part I have a part two coming up for the painting video I posted last week, but I really don't like how Saul's face is turning out. Yesterday was Sunday and I was painting I was trying to figure out Saul's face again, which I like how like his whole face looks except for his eye. I need to fix his eye. It's like bugging me a ton. And maybe if I had a clear reference and character sheet, I wouldn't be having this problem. <laughs> I was really trying to add more contrast and darkness in the portraits, but I think I went overboard. And now the color is a little dull and flat, but we will fix it. And I did begin to fix it a little bit over this weekend, but just this constant realization that painting for me is like a push and pull exercise and I love hate and I like kind of love and hate the process of painting and repainting. But that's what makes me a painter and why I love painting. Overworking is definitely an issue for me too. So it's just a constant balance and decision making game that both excites me and frustrates me. And just making decisions and being confident with my marks, that has been like a big issue lately. And I'm hoping I get over it soon. I think it might just be my mindset this time of the month. Yeah, I just need to kind of let loose a little bit and not be so hard on myself. Also, I still feel like I'm trying to find an illustration and painting style. So I seesaw between making things too realistic or too simplistic or trying to make it more like my digital artwork. So for anyone trying to find an art style or trying to make their work consistent and cohesive looking, I'm right there with you. We'll get through it and make a great variety of artwork in the meantime. Also, Another content creation related update for my fellow art content creators. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I was recently able to monetize my Instagram reels through the new reels ad revenue feature that Meta is, I think they're like slowly releasing it to creators. There's no hard data on how it works and what the monetary turnout is, but I've been reading some other creators' experiences and they're of them using the AdSense thing and they have said they've typically gotten like a cent to five cent. So this is in like USD, so one Ameri one cent of American dollar to five cents of American dollar per 1000 reels views which is honestly what i was honestly what i was sadly expecting from medic since they seem to make creators want to leave the platform with every update in addition to instagram and it's diff honestly it's difficult to monetize short form content even though it's so popular right now i even heard that putting ads on your reels tanks your account's engagement which kind of makes sense since most people don't want to see ads when they're scrolling but i don't know if that's just users or something with the instagram reducing the visibility of monetized content themselves i know that tiktok is also trying to do similar things for their creators so it will be interesting to see how these um monetization forms evolve i don't have a tiktok for my art account and i haven't used it personally since like january but 
Let me know about down below if you guys have any experience with the app and its monetization features. I'm really interested to hear about that. This kind of does make me want to try to post reels more consistently for the month of August to see what sort of reach I can achieve as well as how the monetization will affect the reel. I may just end up turning it off if ads are shown on my reels and I'm making literal pennies and viewership and engagement drops um, because of the ads. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if you guys are exploring this feature as well or want to know more about it. I haven't really found that many people talking about it, so hopefully we hear more as the feature changes and improves. And I hope that it changes and improves because I'll probably just turn it off if it's just a cent per a thousand views. That's for the the kind of viewership I'm pulling over on my reels, that's kind of that's kind of negligible. So yeah. Moving on to some other artwork in this video. A couple weeks ago I spent about a week over at my boyfriend's apartment and I made and ate risotto for the first time and it was so good. Oh my gosh. When my boyfriend and I like both both took like a bite of it. It was like a ratatouille moment where it was like oh it was so good and we had it like for lunch and dinner the next day and yeah it, it was so good and so i decided to take a lot of clips and pictures for food drawing references and also i don't think i had ever painted or drew a shrimp before so it really interested me and my boyfriend and i have kind of like a shrimp is like one of our symbols i guess you would call it or like callbacks so there's a lot of good memories associated with the whole cooking session so i wanted to document it with some art we were coming up on our anniversary and it felt like we were kind of celebrating that whole idea and I've always enjoyed cooking and baking with people as a way to spend quality time together and it can end up being a disaster like the first time I baked something with my boyfriend. But guys, did you realize I have a boyfriend? I feel like I keep on saying that like every single sentence, but yeah. Hi Steve. It's the first time I baked with him. We were making like, we were trying to make pumpkin snickerdoodle cookies. And I I think I was putting my, putting his measuring cup cause we're over at his place. I was putting it in like the brown sugar. So it's like a denser sugar. And then I guess I was using the force of like a thousand men, but as I was like pulling out the measuring cup, I snapped the handle off and I just turned to him and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Cause we were dating at the time and we're still like relatively new friends. It was just a hilarious moment. And he still has that like measuring cup handle to this day, the snapped off, the snapped off like handle. And I'm just like, each time I see it, it's just like, a, it's such a funny reminder, but also such a great a reminder of like a great time just like baking and having fun and celebrating fall which it's is coming up so we'll have to do like a part two of those cookies and it would be fun to film it I've always like fantasized about like filming like a, a whole cooking session with some art along with it so I'll look into that let me know if you guys would be interested in like a baking slash drawing episode I feel like that'd be really fun but anyways sorry for that tangent uh it's it's kind of always a surprise with how things will turn out when you're cooking with friends or family so some of my best memories from college are hanging out with people at my apartment cooking or bringing food into the painting studio and being able to feed my friends and share food with people that just it's it just makes my heart so happy and I love doing it. And after doing this painting, it really made me think of how I can incorporate more food into my character art and painting. But then I was I was literally like, I have two well-known characters in my art who are literally fruit themed and a vampire character I'm designing currently that is wine themed. So I'm just like, girl, you already have that. So I could just take those ideas a lot further and incorporate the actual fruits and drinks with the characters. For instance, this wine character, I think I'll be showing some clips of the sketching process later in the video. I'll be making art of them as part of a color palette trend that's going on, that's going on among artists in the Instagram space, you basically you basically get a bunch of other artists uh, to all do like the same color palette and you show it on reels and it's really cool. It's really interesting to see how each artist like takes the, the idea of the, the palette and I really want to incorporate a lot of food or like a tea set or some sort of table setting in the painting to hint at their rivalry with, rivalry with Bill and Saul and make it super indulgent or maybe like gothic or I have no idea. I'm just saving a ton of photos from Pinterest of what I'm trying to shoot for. So hopefully in a future video, you'll see like a progress draw with me of that piece. 
I'm kind of with my artwork right now I'm really trying to focus on like clean and cohesion and trying to delve into more polished works now that I have more time I've been really re reflecting on the last couple years I've spent at the university that I went to and I the education that I received and how well it helped me to get to where I wanted to be but also looking into developing my skills even further through a mentorship or online learning I feel like my art for like the longest time has been lacking the polish I want it to have and I've been trying for so long to get that by myself but I think I just really need to like look at other artists or even have like a one-on-one -on -one mentorship um, to take my skills further into a place I want to be especially with someone with especially from other people with industry skill or illustration experience I don't necessarily want to be a concept artist or visual developer mainly just a better illustrator for my own ideas and the work I want to produce and show to clients and show to and have featured in my content creation but also that can be quite expensive so I've been thinking about it for a while and really weighing my options particularly been looking at digital art illustration classes from people who have a lot of like experience and just really want to know how they get their work to a polish that I also want my work to be. I don't want to be too critical of my work, but I really feel like I'm lacking, like I said, the polish and skills with my artwork and have been comparing myself to artists I see online who are younger than me or around my same age whose skills are more advanced and where I want to be, especially with my own digital art skills in particular. I kind of have a, I feel like I've always had like a love-hate relationship with digital art and never have found a good workflow with it and I know that everyone learns and works at different paces and everyone comes from different educational and opportunity backgrounds and some people just naturally have a gift and an eye for a certain aspect of art or have more time to devote to art so we're all going to be at different places at different points in our life but it's still a little disheartening to see people your age or younger farther ahead in their art and their careers especially when you've been putting in a lot of work and a lot of time doing your best for years and I also kind of feel this growing pressure to make better work since I'm out of school so I have more opportunities and feel more credible with the label as an artist online and being like an artist content creator like having this uh, since my following is also growing I'm also beginning to feel a bit of imposter syndrome like I'll see artists with way more experience and skill and barely have an audience while I'm just some dude scribbling on my iPad and occasionally posting my gay cowboys to my account but also taking in the fact that uh, I basically sold my digital soul as a content creator with feeding into trends and posting constantly so social media skills and growth really has nothing to do with artistic um, worth or skill like social media is like a completely different thing um, and doesn't really gauge how successful of an artist you are but but I just want to remind myself and whoever is listening who might need to hear it don't place your soul value as an artist on your skill level especially as you're still learning and growing as a beginner and mediate I feel like yeah especially if you like just started out don't let your age peers or what you see online stop you or pressure you into thinking your art is below average or just mediocre I've said this quite a few times in previous videos but kind of with anything in life I always I continually learn this it's kind of like uh who is it sisyphus pushing the the boulder up the hill it's like this continually learning once i get to the top hill, i'm like oh i understand this and then it goes back down and i have to learn it again but basically the basically the saying that comparison is the thief of joy it robs you from having fun kills you kills your creativity and passion for art and goals you might have and everyone in life like i said is set up with different advantages and disadvantages so we're not going to be on an equal playing ground all the time and this doesn't just apply to art it can apply to like anything in life like i don't know like fitness or like career wise or family wise or lifestyle wise uh, just like looking at other people online posting and wishing you could be doing that or why aren't you doing that like those sort of things but specifically with art I think that's what makes art so rich and diverse uh, just in its nature no one person is gonna create the same thing with the same background or subject matter aspects of our artistic strength are varied and that's what makes 
any work from any artist intrinsically intrinsically beautiful and unique and valuable to like the human experience as a whole and your personal human experience. We can point out artists we love and study their work and use it as a source of inspiration, but we shouldn't use it as a punishment or to make ourselves feel bad about our own work. It should be exciting to see the possibilities of what you can create and how you can paint or draw through the examples set by other artists. It's so much more easily said than done. I feel like with everything that's hard to learn, but flipping that mindset and just having more positive thinking regarding yourself and your art should leads to such a healthier artist mindset and i don't want to get too sappy about it but i i kind of i used to look at my old work artwork and either laugh at it or cringe a bit but now i look at it and really see someone really trying to improve and express themselves through this medium of visual art and just having fun in the process and growing my passion and appreciating for the art around me and really finding the purpose of like creation and why I'm creating and like how much it means to me and as we're getting towards the end of this video I really hope my channel and the content I create is never demeaning towards certain types of art or unapproachable to any artist so much of the scariness of starting to create is from the fear of failure and not measuring up to the art around you and I never want to make you guys feel that way I'm just your friendly neighborhood artist who's struggles with the same things and is still trying to figure things out and I'm pretty sure I'll never fully get things figured out but I always find comfort and be and I'm thankful for the encouraging and supportive people in my life and you guys who continue to interact and engage with my artwork that means a lot to me so yeah thank you guys so much but yeah that'll be it for this video it got kind of um like most of the draw with me I feel like it gets deep at one point but yeah nothing too serious going on i'm still gonna be doing my silly artist thing um i'll keep on posting i can't say for sure i'll do exactly like two videos a week for august but look i'll see um what i can do and yeah i really like creating videos for you guys and i hope to continue to do that make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more art and content like this sorry it was a bit of a mishmash of different things i've been working on but that's just how things have been lately and i hope you guys enjoy drawing or working alongside me um, make sure to comment down below what you've been working on i'd love to hear that i'd love to hear from you guys and see what you guys been working on you can tag me on instagram and make sure to follow me over there i post pretty much every day and post a lot of updates regarding the painting and some other stuff i've been working on so yeah you can check me out there and yeah that's the end of the video uh, make sure to stretch a bit after the this um drink some water and and take care of yourselves yeah thank you guys for watching bye